Hi, I'm Jamie with Dove Lewis, and I'm here at Portland Community College with Elisa and Laura to find out how to um, work with rabbits. All right, thank you. So one of the first things that's important is knowing how to get our rabbit or patient out of their cage or enclosure. Um, so this little rabbit, his name's Ziggy, was brought in in this cat carrier, essentially. So Elisa is going to pick Ziggy up, and she's going to make sure to kind of tuck his back end in. Good. And then just set him right on the table. So one of the first things I would want to do um, with vitals is try to get um, a real quick respiratory rate, because that can go up very quickly with an animal um, who's stressed. So mostly I just do kind of an observational um, respiratory rate. So if you, if you can, um, just kind of watch their chest rise and fall or their abdomen. And even in the hospital when you have a patient, a lot of times it's best if you can just, you know, look at them through their cage door um, just to evaluate it from a distance like that. So what's a normal respiratory rate for a rabbit? A normal respiratory rate for a rabbit uh, would be somewhere between 30 and 60 breaths per minute. Um, heart rate could be between 130 and 300 even. Normal temperature range um, on these guys, 101 to 104 okay. or so. It is a little higher, so um, you know they can get stressed pretty easily and that can go up. So something definitely to be aware of and keep an eye on. So using your stethoscope when you're um, ausculting your rabbit, same general kind of places as you would listen for a dog and cat. Um, listen on both sides, as you're always going to do with the physical exam. Um, so just make sure you get a good listen. Um, as you know, like if you're listening for uh, respiratory sounds, you can always end up with a pneumonia, you know, in certain lung fields. So you gotta make sure you get a good listen to them. I'm gonna go ahead and have Elisa uh, restrain him in a, um, a normal restraint method, a perineal hold that's uh, used for a variety of things, but one thing we can use it for is sexing the rabbits. So um, I do know that he's a male already. So what she's gonna do is kind of hold the four limbs between her index and middle finger and then the high limbs uh, essentially between her ring finger and middle finger, keeping his body close and rolling him back. So, see if we can get him, uh, yeah. Right there, you can see he is still intact and um, we just kind of have to get through the fur, but you can see, um, his scrotum there. Um, the older they get, you know, they, they will get a little larger, so they can get a little easier to see. They can pull their testicles up into their body cavity, so, um, they, you know, it can be a little challenging to find sometimes, so you do have to be a little bit patient. Um, so that's sexing um, to find a, a male rabbit, and this is a very natural, uh, very normal restraint um, hold for them. Uh, a good way to get a temperature on them is this, um, this is a good restraint for them, um, getting kind of a, a good way to palpate their abdomen mm -hmm. as well. So um, that's that, you know, you could even do an ocular exam or something if you needed to this way. So they seem, you know, pretty comfortable with that. So the, what's important is to get, kind of roll them back into a normal position this way. It seems pretty stress-free for them. So mucous membranes are um, another thing that we want to evaluate in rabbits. Can be a little challenging, and, and when doing that, we're also gonna get a, a very quick peek on doing an oral exam. So rabbits, I will make a quick attempt at this. They don't want their mouths messed with, their teeth. So generally, oh, he's been really good. So gen you might be able to get a quick peek at them to see he has good color there. Oh, yeah. He's been really good. Very often though, um, one of the, the quick things to do is to use your otoscope. Okay, so what I'm gonna wanna do, I'm just kind of cradling his head. Rabbits do calm down kind of when you co cover their eyes and I've been real gentle with them. So what I'm gonna do, just put that right in his cheek there. So he's chewing around, but it lets me like spread his lip back a little bit and just get a little peek in there. So for an IM injection, um, you're gonna use a, a pretty small gauge needle. I'm gonna use a 25 gauge. Um, apaxial is um, you know, where I'm gonna to choose to go. So important things with that, uh, finding the vertebrae, you're gonna go cranial to um, 
you know, to the hips here, kind of to the pelvis, I should say. So what I do is kind of line my finger up here, um, find my pelvis on the rabbit. So Elisa's just, she has a hand back here, making sure that Ziggy's not gonna kick his legs out, you know, cause that can cause some back injury. Um, she has them kind of cradled in her arm there. What you wanna do, you find the, the apexial muscle group there. So right there, I can feel it. You can go straight in. I go at a bit of an angle, just a little bit of an angle. It's not as big a muscle group as you're gonna have on a lab or something. There we go, okay. So the other thing I like to do, and you always have to aspirate. Right. Okay. Now I'm gonna go a little bit slowly. Some of the uh, drugs that we inject IM can sting a little bit. And so, and I'm gonna, there we go. Like with a lot of animals, husbandry, um, so pocket pets and exotics, husbandry is a big thing at home. And if it's not uh, set up properly, that's when you start to see a lot of health issues with the animals. So they need to have proper things um, you know, in their home setting to chew on to keep their uh, dental problems at bay. So yeah, you have to get those treated and then education with the client is big.